praise the living God. Praise the living God. This is the day that the Lord has made. We rejoice and be glad in it. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, amen. I thank God that I'm here. And it is by God's grace that I'm here. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You're all welcome. And I believe the Lord has a word for me and for you in Jesus' name. And I thank God that uh, I'm preaching for the first time in the new cathedral. Praise the living God. <laughs> I don't take it for granted. Oh, God is doing new things in your lives, in our lives, in the church, and the body of Christ worldwide, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Praise the living God. Something new is happening in the spiritual realm and in the physical realm. The Bible says, forget the past. Behold, I make everything new in Jesus' name. I thank God I was here last Friday when my husband was being ordained. Praise the living God, Reverend Ben Odongo. So God is good. Praise the living God. The Bible says, <laughs> when the time came, everything that I was said, that I was prophesied, were fulfilled. When the time comes, what God has promised you will come to pass. It doesn't matter what you've gone through. It doesn't matter what the world has said against you. When the time comes, oh, the Lord will manifest in your lives. And I believe this is the time in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Holy Spirit, we worship you. Stand up and we worship in this song. Lord, we worship you. From 2 a.m., we've been in prayer with my husband. And I believe you're not here by accident. The Lord prepared that you'll be in the bless the 8th of November 2024. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we adore you. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. It's not by power. It's not by mighty. It is by the Spirit of God. Holy Spirit, move. Oh, my God. As we talk about saints in the warfare, Holy Spirit, move right now. Holy Spirit, touch us. Holy Spirit, touch those who are online. Holy Spirit, touch those who are physically here. Holy Spirit, hover. All over this country, Holy Spirit over, over nations, oh Holy Spirit over in our marriages, oh Holy Spirit over in our businesses, at our places of work, Holy Spirit over in the church leadership, Holy Spirit over in our health, Lord, and align everything according to your will. Lord, we worship you. Hallelujah, twa kushaba, homo yo liquera, shimo ishe, yo tuebe, herisoba, nitumaya, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, ah, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, we love you, Holy Spirit, we love you. Holy Spirit, you love you. Holy Spirit, you love you. Holy Spirit, touch your people. Ask the Holy Spirit to fill you. Ask the Holy Spirit to baptize you. Oh, Holy Spirit, you love Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you worship me. Jesus Christ, worship Jesus Christ. Oh, Holy Spirit, feel us. Oh, 
the mighty name of Jesus Christ we pray it. Amen. 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 Give the Lord a shout of praise. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We are talking about saints in warfare. I'm Reverend Agnes Joy Natkunda Odongo, and I serve by God's grace at St. James Chapel, Makere University Business School. And we thank God the Lord has given us a new principal, Professor Moses Mohezi, a godly man. We pray that the Lord will use him as he leads the institution in Jesus' name. Amen. Talking about saints in warfare. This morning before I came, I got an attack. There was pain running through my knee, which has never happened. Then my husband told me, you're going to talk about warfare. That's why the enemy is attacking you. But we are more than conquerors in Jesus' name. Until when I reached there is when the pain left and I was able to climb the pulpit. Praise the living God. So may the Lord take away every pain in your body in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Saints in warfare, Daniel chapter 7. From verse 15 to 21, Daniel chapter 7, from verse 15 to 21, we are into the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 7, from verse 15 to 21. But allow me to begin from verse 1, because from verse 15, it's giving us the interpretation of the dream. But which dream is this? So Daniel chapter 7, verse 1. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream, and visions passed through his mind as he was lying in bed. He wrote down the substance of his dream. Daniel said, in my vision at night, I looked, and there before me were the four winds of heaven, churning up the great sea, four great beasts, each different from the other came up out of the sea. The first was like a lion and had the wings of an eagle. I watched until its wings were torn off and it was lifted from the ground so that it stood on two feet like a human being and the mind of a human was given to it. And there before me was a second beast which looked like a bear. He was raised up on one of its side and had three ribs in its mouth between its teeth. It was told, get up and eat your fill of flesh. After that, I looked, and there before me was another beast, one that looked like a leopard, and on its back it had four wings, like those of a bird. This beast had four heads, and it was given authority to rule. After that, in my vision at night, I looked, And there before me was a fourth beast, terrifying and frightening and very powerful. It had large iron teeth. It crushed and devoured its victims and trumped underfoot whatever was left. It was different from all the former beasts and had ten horns. While I was thinking about the horns, there before me was another horn, a little one which came up among them, and three of the first horns were uprooted before it. This horn had eyes like the eyes of a human being, and the mouth that spoke boastfully. As I looked, thrones were set in place, and the ancient of days took his seat. His clothing was as white as snow. The hair of his head was white like wool. His throne was flaming fire, and its wheels were all ablaze. A river of fire was flowing, coming out from before him. Thousands upon thousands attended him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated, and the books were opened. Then I continued to watch because of the boastful words. The horn was speaking. 
I kept looking until the beast was slain and its body destroyed and thrown into the blazing fire. The other beasts had been stripped of their authority, but were allowed to live for a period of time. In my vision at night, I looked, and there before me was one like a son of man, coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the ancient of days, and he was laid into his presence. He was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. All the nations and all the peoples of every language worshipped him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away. And his kingdom is the one that will never be destroyed. Hallelujah. So we go to the interpretation where our topic is coming from. Verse 15. I, Daniel, was troubled in spirit. And the visions that passed through my mind disturbed me. I approached one of the, those standing there and asked the meaning of all this. So he told me and gave me the interpretation of the things. The four great beasts are four kingdoms that will rise from the earth. But the holy people of the Most High will receive the kingdom and will possess it forever. Yes, forever and ever. Amen. Then I wanted to know the meaning of the fourth beast, which was different from all the others and most terrifying with its iron teeth and bronze claws. The beast that crushed and devoured its victims and trampled underfoot whatever was left. I also wanted to know about the ten horns on its head and about the other horn that came up before which three of them fell the horn that looked more imposing than the others, and that had eyes and a mouth that spoke boastfully. As I watched, this horn was waging war against the holy people and defeating them. Praise God. It was waging war against the holy people and defeating them. That's where our topic comes from. Saints in warfare. Today, we are diving into the book of Daniel, beloved. Specifically, looking at the passage that talks about saints in warfare. That's why I went slow when I was reading verse 21. Because that's where the topic is coming from. In this vision, we see a glimpse of the spiritual battle that God's people face. Spiritual battle. Remember, things begin in the spiritual realm before they manifest in the physical. So it, the scripture is showing us there is a battle, spiritual battle, that God's people face. So we'll go deep and see what it teaches us. One point we'll look at, we need to identify our enemy. Tell your neighbor, identify your enemy. That is one of the points to look at. Because there is a war in the spiritual realm. But you cannot defeat the enemy you don't know. So the first thing you do, identify the enemy. In Daniel's vision, the four beasts represent powerful and oppressive kingdoms. They symbolize the forces of evil that seek to destroy God's people. As saints in warfare, we must recognize that our true enemy is not flesh and blood, but spiritual powers and forces of darkness. We we'll read together in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. We we'll read together. The Bible says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly place. So even the Bible tells us in Ephesians that we are at war 
And this war, we are not fighting flesh and blood, but we are fighting the principalities in the spiritual realm. We we'll got together, 2 Corinthians also, 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 3, we are building on that point, how to identify your enemy, because when you know your enemy, you'll defeat him. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 10, 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 3 to 5. Let's read together. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 to 5. The Bible is saying, For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Praise the living God. So the Bible is saying the weapons we are fighting with are not carnal, but they have divine power. Beloved of God, as you wage war, in the world we are in, you are not alone. The Lord has given you divine power to defeat the enemy in Jesus' name. So our warfare is distinct that involves unseen spiritual forces and principalities that seek to determine our faith, that seek to undermine it, steal our joy, and hinder our spiritual growth. So by recognizing the spiritual uniqueness of our warfare, we are better equipped to engage in warfare. When Peter came and told Jesus Christ, oh, you know we care for you, you should not die. What did Jesus Christ tell Peter? Get behind me, Satan. Jesus realized it was not Peter. It was the enemy speaking through Peter. So sometimes... <laughs> The people who are attacking you, they are not alone. The enemy uses them. So it is important to identify the enemy. And when you identify, you're able to defeat the enemy. Praise the living God. So one of the ways of surviving in the world is to know and to discern the enemy and their attacks. Because the enemy you know you'll also know how to attack. But when you don't know, you'll be defeated. And so I pray that the Lord will give us the spirit of discernment as we walk this salvation journey, that we shall be able to discern oh, the battle we are in and the enemies we are fighting. Praise the living God. Another point to look at, standing firm in faith. Sense in warfare. You've already identified your enemy. What do you do now? Stand firm. Praise the living God. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The Bible says, Isaiah 54, 17, No weapon forged against me shall prosper. Beloved of God, stand firm in your face. Because no weapon forged against you shall prosper in Jesus' name. So despite the intimidating beasts, Daniel sees a scene of victory. Where the saints are given dominion and the kingdom that will never pass away. So whatever is happening, it doesn't matter. The Lord has given you dominion. The Lord has given you authority. The Lord has given you a kingdom that will not pass away. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Amen. Amen. Just like Daniel, we are called to stand firm in our faith. Knowing that God is in control. And will victoriously defeat our enemies. Praise the living God. I don't know what you're going through. But the assurance is that God has given you power. 
God has given you dominion. God has given you authority. And God is with you. And if God is with you, you are more than a conqueror in Jesus' name. Like endless struggles, no matter how hard you try, sometimes, oh, things may not work the way you planned. Sometimes things may not work the way you planned. And your spirit will feel low. Why? Because your plans are shattered. It is as if unseen force is constantly pushing back, making every step forward a battle. Hmm? What you're experiencing, what I'm experiencing, is more than just a rough path. It is a spiritual warfare. That's why you need to know what is happening in the spiritual realm. Because sometimes things are working against you and you don't know why. We are in warfare. Has sense. This, is just, this isn't just a series of unfortunate events. It's a deliberate attack on your life. Where you find each person is dying of the same disease. And people will say, cancer is the one that kills us in our family. Others will say, in our family, we all die of accidents. Others will say, in our family, diabetes. In our family, pressure. Series of events. That's not normal. Ask the Spirit of the Lord to show you so that you can arise and pray and cancel that wicked cycle in your family. Praise the living God. So pay attention whatever is happening. Things don't just happen. There is war that is going on. But most believers are sleeping. But the enemy is not sleeping. Jesus Christ tells us the, the parable where someone had to sow good seeds. But at night, the enemy came and did what? Started sowing weeds. Arise and pray, beloved of God, than never before. This is not the time to sleep. It is time to arise and defeat the enemy. Because we are in a constant warfare has sense. Praise the living God. So it's not about now time to give up. No. It is time to stand firm and fight. Another point we look at, trusting in God's sovereignty. As we see Daniel chapter 7, we need to trust in the power of God. The vision in Daniel chapter 7 affirms God's sovereignty over kingdoms and powers. He alone is the one who gives victory. The Bible says he brings others down, he raises others. We saw, if you're reading Daniel chapter 4, Nebuchadnezzar was removed from power. And the Bible says he was cast out into the bush for seven years eating with wild animals, until he acknowledged the sovereignty of our God. And the Bible says he was restored. So victory belongs to God. We'll read together Psalms 103, verse 19. Psalms 103, verse 19. The Bible says the Lord established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. We'll read together also Isaiah 49, verse 9 to 10. Isaiah 49, 9 to 10. I am God and there's no other. I am God and there's none like me that is God. No one who can compare themselves with our God. And that's why the Bible is telling us, verse 14, he was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. 
All nations and peoples of every language worshipped him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away. And his kingdom is the one that will never be destroyed. And that is the kingdom that the Lord has given the saints. Praise the living God. And that kingdom does not pass away in Jesus' name. Praise the living God. So from the ancient of days, as we read, from the beginning and from the ancient times, things not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I'll accomplish my purpose. That is in Isaiah 46, Isaiah 46, 9 to 10. The Bible is saying, from the beginning, he is God. He foretells the end from the beginning. Oh, my God, we worship He adore you. That is the God that you serve, who knows the end from the beginning. And from the end, oh, the Lord has already given you victory, even before you reach there. Praise the living God. And so the scripture emphasizes God's sovereign, sovereignty over all things, including kingdoms, powers, and the course of history. In the vision of Daniel chapter 7. We see a glimpse of God's glory. And control over all the nations. If you go down. I was trying to read through the commentaries. They'll tell you all these kingdoms. That have reigned the world. There was the Roman Empire. There was the Babylonian Empire. There was the Median Persian Empire. But all those empires, where are they now? They are no more. But the kingdom of God lasts forever in Jesus' name. Amen. And that is the God we serve as we are in this warfare. So as the sense in warfare, it is comforting to know that God is in control of all things. Including, oh, all nations, including your life, including your marriage, including your finances, including whatever you're going through, the Lord is in control. And if he's in control, oh, you're more than a conqueror in Jesus' name. So we can find peace and strength in trusting in his sovereignty. Knowing that his purposes will prevail. Even when we face challenges and obstacles in our spiritual battles, we can have confidence that God is working all things together for those who love him. Praise the living God in Jesus' name. So it doesn't matter what is happening. Because God is working all things together for the good of those who love him. Because victory belongs to you. Victory belongs to the church. And that's why Jesus Christ is like, all authority in heaven has been given to me. And if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, the Lord has given us power and authority to trample under scorpions and snakes and all paths of darkness. Oh, Lord, we thank you. Praise the living God as I end. Another scripture we'll look at. Oh, Lord, we worship you. Putting on the armor of God in Ephesians chapter 6. Because we are in constant warfare as saints, as a church. And what we need now, we need to put on the armor of God. According to Ephesians chapter 6, we'll read together Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 1. Ephesians chapter 6, we are going to read together. Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10, the Bible is saying, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full arm of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, 
but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth. So the Bible is telling us, because we are in the war, we are constantly in warfare has sense. Let us put on the full armor of God. Because if you're putting on the full armor of God, you'll be able to defeat whatever comes against you. I don't know what you're going through. Battles everywhere. But the Bible is telling us, just put on the full armor of God. It is going to help you against all the attacks of the enemy. Put on the full armor of God. Make sure you're firm in your righteousness. You're firm in your faith. You stand firm in your truth. You stand firm in the salvation that God provides. With your own power, you cannot. You need the power of God. With your own, you cannot. You need God's hand upon your life. Praise the living God. Because the war is there. As long as you're still on earth, there is war. Revelation chapter 12, the Bible says, then there was war in, in heaven. Revelation chapter 12, we'll read the first verses. I'm about to conclude. Revelation chapter 12, the Bible is telling us, and a great sign appeared in heaven. Verse 7, then the war broke out in heaven. War broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was not strong enough, and they lost their place in heaven. The great dragon was held down, that ancient snake called the devil, or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was held to the earth and with his angels with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters who accuses them before our God day and night has been held down. They triumphed over him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Praise the living God. So we see the enemy is thrown down. And that's why, because we are still on us, it is the war until we go where, until we go to heaven. So that's why the Lord is telling us, stand firm in your faith. Stand firm in the Lord. Put on the full armor. We are in battle. We are not sleeping. We are in battle. The enemy is not sleeping. And the sense it is time to arise. <laughs> And take our position. Stand in our dominion. Stand in the authority that God has given us to defeat the enemy. Praise the living God. You can't afford to sleep, beloved of God. We are in warfare as a saints. We are in warfare as a church. Attacks are everywhere. Attacks in marriages. Oh my God. A woman just walks out of the marriage and gets married to another man. That is not normal. Children are into drugs. Young people are into drugs. That is not normal. You can't sleep. Sexual immorality is at the rise. You can't sleep as mothers, as fathers. The enemy is attacking our children. The enemy is attacking the country. Oh, what is happening in the country? Look at the fights. People fighting in parliament. Oh my God. And you think it is normal. It is not normal. It's time we arise as a church and take our position and cry out to the Lord. Saints, we are in warfare. Praise the living God. Look at what is happening.
happening in the world. It is not normal. We need Christ. We need the God that never before. We need the spirit of the Lord to bring order, to create order in our children, to create order in our marriages, to bring order in this country. Beloved of God. Oh, Jesus Christ is like I have come to give you life and abundance. Take up Jesus Christ. Who is your everything? We are going to stand up as we pray. Stand up as we pray. Oh, as I conclude, as saints in warfare, we are engaged in the spiritual battle that is real and ongoing. But we can take heart in knowing that our victory is already secured in Christ. Let us stand firm in our faith, beloved of God. Let us stand firm and trust in God's sovereignty and put on the full arm of God as we continue to fight the good fight. May we always remember that God has already won the victory. And we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Oh, just open your mouth, open your heart, and speak to the Lord. Oh, ask the Lord to empower you. Ask the Lord to empower you. Ask the Lord to empower you. We are in warfare as a church. We are in warfare as a country. We are in warfare as an institution. We are in warfare as a family. We are in warfare. But ask the Lord to empower you right now. Ask the Lord to give you the spirit of discernment. Ask the Lord, oh, to revive you. Oh, to energize you. To power fresh anointing oil upon your life so that you are able to defeat the enemy. Beloved of God, open your mouth right now. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Lord, arise in our lives. Let all your enemies be scattered, Lord. Arise in this country, Uganda. Arise in Africa. Arise in the church worldwide. Arise in different continents. Let all your enemies be scattered. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, empower us than ever before. Lord, give us the spirit of discernment than ever before. Empower the church. Empower the sense. Empower the body of Christ worldwide. Oh, give us the spirit of discernment to know the enemy, to know what you want us to do. Empower us, Lord, as we are in constant war. Empower us, Lord. Oh, Lord, we worship you. Lord, we adore you. There is no God like you. Thank you, Jesus Christ, that you have given us authority to trample, oh, to trample down, oh, all those scorpions and snakes or powers of darkness. Help us, Lord, to use that authority. Help us, Lord, to know the authority you have given us, Lord, that we shall stand firm, Lord. Oh, because we are already victorious. Jesus Christ, you want the battle for us. Thank you, Lord. We worship you, adore you. Holy Spirit, empower us. Revive us, Lord. Father, we thank you. Holy Spirit, visit our marriages. Visit our children, Lord. Bring them forth to your righteousness, Lord. Oh, save the marriages. Save the young people, Lord. Save the politics in this country. Save the economy in this country. Save the environment in this country. Save the church, Lord. Save us, Lord. Let righteousness, Lord, 
be established in our lives once again. Be established in nations. Let righteousness, Lord, be established, Lord, all over the world, Lord. Father, we thank you. We worship you, adore you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you.